David Calder over there at the far end, BP in sales with my race. Coming up next, Colin and Finley, uh, right here next to me, BP Business Development with Profit Soar. Uh, Murat Ozu, uh, founder and CEO of Green Road over there in the uh, cool green shirt. And Ryan Walsh, right next to his right, Business Development Manager with G-Link. Talking about uh, your products and stuff yesterday, so that must have been, that must have been fun. And then next to him is Mr. Martin Thornrose, uh, principal of Convergent Systems. And uh, there we go, let's give a warm welcome. <laughs> so, you know, you gotta, you gotta listen to your customer. Do you guys find out there, generally speaking, that that is something that occurs on a regular basis? Uh, David, I'm thinking of Thank you, Glenn. Absolutely. So, uh, one of the things I think our industry can benefit from is what the big technology companies are doing. You know, Amazon has a great philosophy. Listen to your customer, innovate, and execute in such a way that you exceed your customer's expectations. You know, that's a great way to go about doing things. Right, and that pretty much sums up the uh, entire discussion we had. So, thank you. <laughs> but, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And a lot of the things that we want to talk about is how you guys can partner with people to get that inspiration to deliver the products and services that the buyers need and help to, to build those relationships. Uh, when, you know, when you're thinking about the guest entertainment things, you guys could probably see a little bit farther ahead in trend uh, as well. And I don't think those practically changing what, you know, like what Brad is, is going through here. Let me ask you that question then, all right? Because, uh, you know, things are changing so rapidly. And again, your customer, you tell, you tell me some stuff yesterday that I was completely unaware of. So it got me thinking, how do you explain that properly to make the, the customer understand that they should really be listening to you as an expert and not just as a service provider? Uh, again, our customers are the hotels themselves, the general managers and the properties. What we see is there, there's a need in the industry right now. Everybody's listening to the customer, but they're not taking what they're hearing and putting that back into marketing. So that's where the content marketing strategy comes from. When you learn a piece of information, a unique selling point that your customer has, how are you taking that and putting it back into the marketing channels? I think that's the next evolution of reputation management, listening to your customer what's going to happen. Right, is you know who your customer is. I think the first question you have to ask is, who is your customer? Is it the general manager? Is it the revenue manager? Is it right. the financial partner? Who is the customer before you can listen? Right. Yeah. So I, I think that makes a lot of that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, Colin, maybe you could uh, expand on that. How do you figure out that and make sure that you're approaching it in the right way? Well, for for us, it's a little bit different because our customer base is very wide because we have a customer at the ownership level, at the management company level, and at the hotel level. Right. So when we get a lot of different requests for, in fact, that, you know, we came out with a core product 13 years ago, and I'd say 80% of what we've enhanced has been customer driven. Mm -hmm. And that customer may be functionality at the hotel level, reporting at the corporate level, or access at the ownership level. So we just have to you know, determine what the request is and how we can best serve it. That must be uh, challenging for you because you've got different people buying for different priorities, and the guy who's paying for it is a lot different than the guy who's using it at the property level. So how do you make everybody happy? Well, uh, you, you, unfortunately, it's something we can't make everybody happy. That, you know, that's uh, probably next to impossible. But we do have to um, discern the difference between the wants and needs. Because you may want a button on a screen to do X, but you may need just a little column and report mm -hmm. that will solve that issue. So we have to, as a software developer, we have to decide how can we accomplish that want Right. in a way that is not going to affect every client out here because, you know, 1,400 hotels using it, it's, you know, you can't be everybody's personal program. No. So you have to figure out what best serves the, the vast majority, but there are certain pockets where there's... All right, so I guess what we've, uh, you know, what we've figured out right now is relationship building is absolutely fundamentally the key to what you're going to do. You've got to pay attention to what the client's uh, needs really are and also offer your expertise to tell them the stuff that they may not have realized that they know. And you've got to try to have a, a system in order to make it as easy as possible when you have uh, multiple layers of participants and decision makers to try to make everyone happy. All right, that's not complicated at all. I don't know how you guys are. Constituency and right. Right, saying, how can I serve? Right? How can I serve what your needs are out there to your customers? Right. Understanding the value chain. Not only do we do, we just went through an entire analysis of our company, <laughs> which is to say, who is our customer? Right, you know, and, and we found out we had about five different customers. So then we're able to focus our innovation and development efforts to our various different customers. 
Mm-hmm. And that makes it a lot easier. And then what you find is you have common denominators. And within those common denominators, <coughs> then you can economize on development costs for and present it to the market as a complete ecosystem. You know, that word has been used a lot now as ecosystems, and I think it's something we can talk about a lot more in the hotel industry. But what is our ecosystem and how do we all play together? Mm-hmm. Can I jump on that? Of course. Um, so innovation is actually a near and dear topic to my heart. So we have required reading in Inbrook called uh, Innovators for Nomad. So if anybody hasn't read it, you should go outside and read it. It's really the um, sort of the seventh book on innovation. And not on what is innovation, but how does it happen? How does it look? And how do you spot it? So I would argue that anything we're talking about, listening to customers, is customer service. Yeah. Right? So you're serving a customer. Um, adding features and listening to customers should absolutely do that. However, true, and in this case, disruptive innovation, uh, as this book sort of is an empirical study, uh, over like the last like, 50 years or so, um, is about how your customer, the people who listen to their customers, keep going in a certain direction. The true innovation happens in markets that aren't yet developed, right? So right. there is no customer. Right. And so, um, you know, I want to differentiate against that and the clarify the point of what is innovation. No one would have thought we'd have had a, a, a social market, right? No customers were saying, gee, I really wish, uh, you know, that, that I had a network where people could like me and this and that and the other thing. So that stuff happens in markets that don't exist, right? right? And then um, markets develop around those. So, um, and what makes these types of things disruptive is a completely new value system that wasn't even in place before. So the functionality that you would have had listening to your best customers and doing a good job, by the way, these are all best practices, to listen to your customers and respond to them, would not have led you to truly innovate, right? It's the, sometimes you just try to think outside the box right. and, and just, just go with the moment. And those things are usually where Right, good, good point. So I guess you have to consider both of those factors because you need to be able to create in a clear brain type environment that's not influenced by anything that's come before it, but you also have to make sure that you're using and delivering products and services that are requested by your audience out there. Uh, so, uh, you know, Mar- what, what about, you know, we're following on his notion here, uh, you get a lot of ideas, but how do you assist through the ones that you can dedicate your limited resources to to actually be successful? So, um, you know, coming from outside the industry, I had very strong ideas of how the internet would change the industry. Um, so we had a roadmap, uh, and so everything gets tested against the roadmap, you know, so it's a very easy test. It's either on the, on the roadmap and hence it's a prioritization process, or it's not on the roadmap, and, and in which case we, we, we still, pretty much to me, I mean, we, we, we just decide on, so revenue management was something that wasn't on the roadmap, but then we came up with the roadmap at the beginning, and we saw how key it became later on. Right. Um, but for the most part, uh, you, you have to stick to some vision. Right? You have to stick to something that you're good at, uh, and not try to do everything in the world. And, and that makes it easier for us. Great. You know what I'm so I, I actually disagree with Colin. I think it's up to us as suppliers to lead. I think it's our job to go out and stir things up. I think it's our job to bring to our hotel partners new ideas and say, what do you think, right? And it's up to us to have more than sufficient, excellent industry and domain knowledge so that when we do that, we do it really well. You know, our company, iRates, builds a need for the mid-tier and below revenue management market. There's nothing out there. Right. You know, it came because a couple of people said, this is a real need. And we're willing to put in the pain and the sweat equity to bring a product to market that works here. Help us do that. Mm-hmm. So I think we need to lead. You know, you guys are busy. You've got guests to take care of. You've got, you know, owners to deal with. You've got REITs to deal with them, you know. We need to bring it to you and say we're going to make your business better because you don't have time. Yeah. Oh, hey, we got a question. Uh-huh. Brett, stand up. There's no microphone, so just speak uh, loudly. Right here. <laughs> here, come, here comes. Here comes the microphone to say today. So, what are the industry sort of measurements to decide what to do? It, it seems to me that some of the gestation period of creating some of the next technology takes longer than our end consumer can wait for it. Remember the conversation about content going, being pushed to the telephone, and you had to have all your menus on the telephone, and yet right behind it, televisions came out with the next big innovation in HD and so forth. And the last thing we wanted to do in hotels is to create all this content 
on your phone. Uh, uh, and, and so we missed that window, and there's probably a lot of technology that kind of got pushed aside, sort of the difference between beta and, and uh, VHS and, and so forth. So as experts out there in the, in the technology world, how do you look to the future to know that what your idea is actually going to be fruitful in two, three years from now? Great question. Uh, I, I go back to my, my roadmap thing. You know, there's, there's, you've got to separate the strata of uh, trends versus um, the things that drive those trends versus the application of the technologies that you then develop, right? So if you do things on trends basis, meaning, uh, so the way I look at trends, like, you know, social and all of those things is it's more data and more places are being updated by more people um, and it's uh, providing more transparency, right? So at the end of the day, that's the trend, right? And then underneath that trend, there's technologies that are being developed. So you have now all of the, uh, the types of technologies that synthesize that loosely uh, structured data and tell you what consumer sentiment is and then tie it back to a room experience or a restaurant experience. So I would say if you're making decisions based on features and functionality, you're, there's, a very big, uh, there's a very big chance that you're going to miss the trend, right? Because that sounds, it's very, it's very uh, acute and it's very um, pigeonholed to whatever that functionality was talking about. But if you um, make a bet on a trend and those types of things and try not to tie that back to what the specific end product of that trend is going to be, I think you're going to find yourself better positioned to jump on whatever that trend is. It's a, it's a marathon, it's not a split. Right? I think you should always remember that. And then it's a balancing act. You're hearing different uh, scales, right? So we're in the, we're in the uh, 80, well, we're waiting until we're uh, disruptive in So 80 20, we're going to lead. We're going to start trying to do things that people aren't even thinking about. And 20%, we're going to make sure that we're listening to our customers to make sure that they don't lose something that they already value. Right, great. Dan, Frank, home. I think it's a few things. Uh, the first is overbuild investment in the future. If you have the chance to build an infrastructure that you think the last 10 years, do it. Um, some of our analysts mentioned it yesterday. Let's get to the cloud as fast as we can. Get rid of these boat anchors called legacy systems. Yes, we've been talking about that for 15 years now. Uh, I know, but we actually we actually can get there. There's this little company called Amazon out there that got servers all over the world. Um, cloud, I think. Anyway, and then the next is in our partnerships is what I found is successful is to make sure that my hotel partners are as invested as I am because that's the adoption. That's how we create change. Right. There's some good friends who are senior executives and they're saying, you know, David, this is a great idea, but I don't know how to do it. And so I don't do deals unless I feel like my partner is invested in the change, not just the financial investment, but in the change at the cultural level at the property there and in their organization to be able to do that. And then the third is, and I think the most important, is how can we be of service? So if we all are cooperating and working together, we lift the entire ship up higher. And that area of cooperation and BIPAC is a perfect example of how that works is really working in the marketplace, and that's why I was mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I, I think that really wrapped everything up really nicely, but I'll try to wrap it up as, you know, somewhat close to what, what David just did right now. I think when you, you know, I want you guys to leave here and start thinking about what some of the things that we talked about here today, how they're applicable to your business. You still have a full day of meetings left. Try listening, try implementing some of the strategies that we have here. Think about how you can innovate, yet not get too far away from that safe bench so you feel comfortable. Think about how you can respond to your customers' needs, not just what they want, but what they really, actually, truly need, and how you're able to deliver all of that. I also want you guys to uh, to go back and you know think about that cultural change. I thought that was really great because when you're investing in products or services, you have to know whether or not if you're on the buyer side, you know whether your team can pull it off. And if they can't, then it's going to be a relationship that is not going to work right from the uh, get-go. And I think for guys on your side of the equation, you have to know what the uh, you know, what's going on at the property levels um, and culturally to be able to decide whether or not you want to get into to that kind of a thing as well. But in the end, it is all about partnership. It's all about that fundamental idea exchange about how we can work together and how we can team up. Because if we are working together, that is how we are going to be most successful. 
We can do it all alone and probably get here, but if we are able to work together, we're definitely going to be able to take it up, up, up to the next level. So think about that. We're all, you know, one thing I love about the hospitality industry is, you know, how hospitable everybody is. I find very few of those, uh, you know, real jerky kind of characters in this business, and I'm very lucky. I've had um, opportunities to work in the, you know, Hollywood side of, of things, and pretty much everyone there is kind of an idiot and a jerk, so it's really <laughs> nice that to know that on this side of the universe, you guys are all so awesome. So I want you to take that awesomeness now and go to the open marketplace and think about how you guys can partner together on awesome solutions that are going to make your guests happy and everybody in this room a little bit of money. I want to thank everybody for being here, especially thank these guys here. Thanks for watching.